Hey traders, what's up? Mike here with the watch this video for Monday, July 24th. Uh, before I go into the watches, what we're going to be watching for possible day trades on Monday, I'm going to talk real quickly to people that say you're brand new to our chat room, so don't really know how things go yet, or full-time members that just weren't there on Monday, um, or anyone who's watching who's not a member, um, because we put out a watch list every night on YouTube, tweet it, stock tweets, right? Um, and oftentimes I don't follow up with how or if any of those stocks from the watch list are traded. So XXII is a good example of that. So it looked like this going into Friday. So it made our watch list because of that volume spike. I said something like ugly daily chart, but could have a follow through day. And then we add in um, Friday and you see it had a big move, but then closed you know, back below the middle of the range. How did we trade it? And this is important because people don't understand. You might, you might look at this and say, oh man, if they bought it at the open, they just killed it. And I would say as a day trader, and let me try to scroll over here, um, we don't just buy at the open, I never do. As a matter of fact, if something, say, say a break of a previous day's high is my entry idea, um, one of my rules is I won't take it if it happens in the opening five minutes, right? And that's exactly what happened. Um, Thursday's high was right at four bucks, right? Um, so what did it do? It opens on Friday, the first five minute candle, it goes all the way up to 420 something, um, before closing below four for that five minute candle. Um, I did not take this. It doesn't meet my parameters because it broke the previous day's high in the first five minutes. If you did take this as it broke four, let's scroll over. The very next five minutes, it went all the way down into 370s. So you probably hit out for a stop, right? For a loss. Then it comes back up. And if you took it here thinking, oh, now we're going to, now we're going to go, look what happens again. Comes all the way back down, takes out the low of day, or maybe doesn't, but gets very close to the low of day. You may have hit out again. That's exactly um, what I would call trading wrong, right? You find yourself buying near the highs and selling near the lows again. As a day trader, I wait for an A plus setup on a stock that I think has potential. Um, so XXII put in this lower high here at 420, the earlier high 423. Then it comes up and gets very close to that. So now you sort of have an intraday cup and handle forming. Um, so I posted in chat XXII over that lower high of 420 with the high of day being only 423. There's your kind of handle forming. There's the break. And then it was pretty much off to the races. Now, now I'll slide over my screenshot of my actual trades. There's the post I put in chat. Um, but the, there, right there was that entry, right? You kind of already had the cup and handle forming. So there's the entry instead of at the open stop out or as it's coming up here, selling for a loss again. Um, you got to wait for the A plus setups and amazing R on this one. Um, I actually had slippage on the entry. I have 426 um, fill when I wanted it at basically 421, but I don't mind a few cents slippage. Um, the beauty of this is my stop goes down maybe 15 cents tops below, right? And this ended up going from the from the 420 entry. I'll get this out of the way again. Um, all the way to well over six. That's a huge R, if you will, right? Um, risk versus reward, the, the money that you made versus how much you were risking. So um, it's a good example of what we try to do. I'm going to pause this for a second. Real quick, I wanted to throw the chart back up there one more time um, because people might say, well, why would you sell there? Um, chat room members know upside shape. I always sell some, right? Especially if there's a whole number near and I, that's, this was my final sell, um, right around the whole number six and upside shape. I try to sell for one of three reasons. First, a stop out, right? So in other words, my trade idea, my thesis didn't play out. I take the loss or into upside shape. In other words, not just as it's chopping sideways. So that's what upside shape I sell, um, upside shape I sell. Or the final reason would be uh, at the closing bell, because as you guys know, I do not hold overnight. All right, so anyway, there's a good example of kind of what we look to do. Let's go right into the watch list for um, Monday. And remember, I'm just looking for charts that may give me an intraday trade on the following trading day. Um, PSQH had this crazy, crazy move. Um, and now we've got uh, kind of a nasty reversal, but it's, it's made a big enough move that if we get a narrow range and maybe a break to the upside, 
Um, shorts are going to be a little nervous in this one and probably quick to cover because of the crazy moves they can make to the upside. So I'm not in love with the chart or anything, but with the action, it is kind of interesting. PMGM had that big rip on Thursday. Kind of a quiet inside day on Friday. It looks like, did it top out at exactly 12? Let me try to see. Yeah, topped out at exactly 12. If you look at the intraday on Friday, um, sold off, halted, and then, but near the end of the day, started to curl back up. So this one can move really really quick. Um, so if we get an A-plus setup, I am going to give that one a try for a trade. Uh, BBIG, I had the, I've had this on watch many days. One day I got a nice trade in it. Um, and I don't think I've traded it since. And it had a really nice move on Friday and I did not get a trade in it. It went from 243 to 342. That's a huge percentage gain. Looking at five minute candles, it kind of was, was just slow grind all day and I never got in it. But <laughs> I keep saying the chart still looks like you could have more. So uh, maybe we get an A-plus setup in it on Monday. Maybe I won't miss the entry. RX, RX, a little bit extended from the moving. Moving averages are down here. Um, but it, it is kind of interesting in that it topped out, let's see, on Wednesday, 1675. Then Thursday's high, 1610. Friday's high, 1609. So over that two-day high, like over that 1610, maybe it makes a run at that, uh, what I say, 1675. Um, it's super strong stock. Again, kind of far from the moving averages, but we're going to keep an eye on it. NKLA, to me, after this big pop, is just still flagging, so it goes on watch. BTM, um, nice volume, and I don't know, closed well above its open. We're going to keep our eyes on that one. CEI, I'll zoom in a little bit, you can get a better look at it. But a nice pop, very strong volume um, on Friday. We'll see if we get a follow through setup. Again, think about that XXII chart. If you're wondering like how I'm going to trade it, I'm going to wait for a A plus setup if I get one. Blue, B-L-U-E, uh, put a horizontal line there. It's trying to break out above this recent area. If you look at that horizontal line, nice volume on Friday. So that one goes on watch. Q-B-T-S, I don't know. Um, it's come back into the what we call the buy zone between the 8 and the 20, but it's starting to almost resemble, you know, a failed breakout too, right? Um, but the quantum computing space is still interesting to me and, and they haven't rolled over so i am going to keep it on a chart not in love with it aehr um, had a big breakout here now we've had several days in a row four days in a row where it closed above its open i'm just going to treat that as a potential bounce play you guys know in chat how i trade those if they set up acad kind of the same thing big breakout now four days in a row um, lower i'm going to put that on bounce watch um, arct same thing, strong stock, a few days in a row down. KSCP, um, super strong stock, and now it's getting down near the 20 day, so that one goes on bounce watch. GDRX, kind of the same thing, big move, a few days down into that buy zone. And then lastly, AMC, um, if you weren't around Friday after hours, and I wasn't, um, closed at 440. And let me show you after hours now. Let's go five minute candles and then let's go to after hours. And it absolutely ripped in after hours, went up over 8.50 before going out the after hour session at 7.17. So that will be on Gap Watch on, uh, on Monday. And we'll add other gappers as well. I have babbled long enough. I'll see everybody in the chat room on Monday morning.